In this video, I take a look at a piece of vintage electronic test equipment, the Heathkit C3 condenser checker. Capacitors are one of the three common types of electronic components, along with resistors and inductors. Being able to test capacitors is important in the servicing of electronics such as radios, particularly as certain types of capacitors are prone to failure over time. Testers like this can check for three important characteristics of capacitors. The first is the capacitance value, typically ranging in value from a few picofarad to several thousand microfarad. The second is power factor, a measure of the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. Ideally this is zero, but for certain types like electrolytic capacitors, it can be a few ohms to tens of ohms, and higher for bad devices that would otherwise still measure as having the correct capacitance value. Finally, certain types of capacitors are prone to being electrically leaky, essentially as if they had a resistance in parallel. Wax paper and electrolytic capacitors are prone to leakage as they age, and the leakage may sometimes only occur when a high voltage is applied, without exceeding the maximum voltage that the capacitor is rated at. Some cap checkers provide other features such as measuring resistance and inductance, as much of the circuitry needed to do this is already present in the instrument. And some low-end checkers may only test for open, shorted, or leaking capacitors. Note that these instruments are often referred to as capacitor checkers rather than testers to distinguish them from more accurate and much more expensive capacitance and impedance bridges. The C3 was the third model of capacitor checker offered by Heathkit following the C1 and C2, which were similar. It was offered from 1952 to 1962 at a typical U.S. cost of $19.50. There were minor differences between the three models, but they provided essentially the same features. Like most Heath kits, the C3 was only offered as a kit that the user would assemble. The kit included all parts, including test leads, and didn't require any instruments to construct it. It was replaced by the IT11, which I've described in another YouTube video, in 1961. Before moving on, I should explain that condenser is an older term for capacitor. During the time period that the C3 was offered, it was the term commonly used. By the time the IT11 was introduced in 1961, capacitor was becoming the preferred name, and that tester was marketed and labeled as a capacitor checker. The IT11 has the following features. It's self-contained in a metal case and runs off AC power. Test results are indicated on a magic eye tube also used on some radios of the time, which opens and closes. It can measure capacitance in three ranges, 0.00001 to 0.005 microfarad, 0.001 to 0.5 microfarad, 0.1 to 50 microfarad, and 20 to 100 microfarad. Readings are read off of a large dial. It can also measure resistance over two ranges marked as R and R times 1000, supporting values from about 100 ohms to 5 mega ohms. It can perform a good-bad test for leakage at test voltages of approximately 25, 150, 250, 350, and 450 volts DC. The leakage test uses a spring-loaded switch so that the capacitor under test is safely discharged of any high voltage after the test. For large-value electrolytic capacitors, it can measure power factor from approximately 5 to 50 percent. The capacitor or resistor under test is attached via test leads or directly to terminal jacks. Looking inside, the circuitry is quite simple. It uses two tubes, one for the power supply rectifier and another for the eye tube. The power supply tube is an odd choice, a 1626 triode rather than a true rectifier tube. With the grid tied to the plate, it acts as a diode. Heathkit often got good deals on surplus tubes, and apparently the 1626 was a popular military tube used in radio transmitters. Heathkit was likely able to buy a large inventory of these after the Second World War on the surplus market. The I-tube is a 1629. I-tubes get dimmer and fail over time and are difficult and expensive to replace as most of those that were used in old radios have failed by now. In test equipment like this they're often still good since unlike a radio the unit was typically not used for several hours every day. A transformer generates necessary voltages and isolates the unit from the AC line for safety. The only other parts are resistors, capacitors, switches, and potentiometers. 
Several of the resistors and capacitors are precision values to ensure measurement accuracy. Operation is pretty straightforward as all the controls are well labeled. To test a capacitor, connect it across the two right terminals marked cap or via test leads. If the capacitor is polarized, the positive lead should go to the center terminal. To measure capacitance, pick a suitable range on the function switch. Turn the dial until the eye tube opens and read the value off the dial using the selected range. If the eye opens at the upper or lower limit of the dial, try adjusting the range. Here I'm measuring a typical metal film capacitor of value 0.01 microfarad. And here's a larger electrolytic cap of 15 microfarad. A shorted cap will open the eye at the high end of the range and an open cap will indicate at the low end. Resistance measurements are made in a similar fashion except that the resistor is connected across the two terminals marked RES and one of the two resistant ranges is selected. Here is a 10K resistor being tested. Large electrolytic capacitors may have a significant ESR or equivalent series resistance. This can be measured by turning the power factor knob during the testing until the eye opens completely. The result is shown in percent power factor on the dial. Here's an example of a 15 microfarad cap with a power factor of just under 5%. And this older 8 microfarad cap reads about 8%. Paper, mica, and similar low-value capacitors normally have negligible ESR and are tested with the power factor control in the fully counterclockwise off position. Finally, a leakage test is performed on capacitors by selecting a suitable leakage test range on the dial and momentarily turning the function control from normal to leakage. If the eye opens, the capacitor is good for leakage. If the eye stays closed or flickers, there's significant leakage. Use the range which approaches but doesn't exceed the maximum voltage rating marked on the capacitor. Here I test a 630 volt rated metal film capacitor which tests good at the highest range. And here's an old paper cap which tests bad for leakage when I go to about 350 volts or higher. I think the leakage tests can be too sensitive for large value electrolytic capacitors and sometimes show them as failures even if good. Later models of Heathkit checkers like the IT11 had different leakage ranges for paper and mica caps and for electrolytics. It's important to note that the leakage test requires that the power factor control be in the fully counterclockwise off position. I acquired this unit in November of 2023 in an online estate auction in Ottawa, Canada. From the listing, it looked complete, unmodified, and the iTube was working. One knob wasn't original. As received, it was as expected, and it worked but was not too accurate. It also came with five additional tubes that were not for this unit and presumably were from a five-tube radio. It came with no manual, but I found a full manual on the internet. The original kit would have included two red and black banana jack to alligator clip test leads. These weren't present, but I have lots of similar leads. I replaced the one knob which wasn't original with a 3D printed replica that I made. Can you tell which one it is? I replaced one resistor that was out of spec and replaced all electrolytic and paper caps with new ones. I used a Y2 type safety cap from the line to ground bypass condenser. A few of the capacitors are a little unusual, like this 2 microfarad wax paper capacitor, which is probably the biggest I've ever seen of this type. I was able to find a suitable modern replacement. One of the other replaced paper caps was a precision 0.02 microfarad.
Heathkit provided this as a pair of 0.01 microfarad caps in parallel. Presumably these were selected at the factory to be close to 0.02 microfarad. Otherwise the tolerance of these caps would normally be at least plus or minus 20%, limiting the accuracy of the tester. I measured the values of a number of 0.02 microfarad caps I had and selected one that was very close in value. I made some circuit changes to make it a little safer. I replaced the line cord with a new polarized one and I made sure that the power switch controls the live lead. As mentioned, I replaced the line bypass cap with a type Y safety cap and put the bypass cap between the neutral lead and chassis ground. This is still not particularly safe and if it was to be used on a regular basis I would use a three wire grounded cord as well as add a fuse or circuit breaker. The line bypass cap is also a little higher in value than is now recommended and should really be a value like 0.01 microfarad and not 0.05 otherwise the current through it is enough for the potential for a shock. Some of the caps I replaced were bad and or leaky. The final step in the assembly manual is to calibrate the unit by connecting a provided 200k precision resistor and adjusting the dial to read 200 on the resistance range. The precision resistor was long lost so I used a resistance substitution box set for exactly 200k on a good digital multimeter and made the adjustment. The capacitance and resistance measurements are actually quite accurate, say to two significant digits, given the tolerances of the dial reading. Up until 1970 or so, most radio repair benches likely had an instrument like this sitting on it. The unit's not particularly useful today for measuring resistance and capacitance, as modern low-cost digital multimeters can do so much more quickly and accurately. The leakage test is still useful for testing old capacitors at voltage, although many restorers simply shotgun replace all old wax paper and electrolytic capacitors without bothering to test them. It can also be useful for reforming electrolytic capacitors that have not been used for years but can sometimes be restored to health by applying an increasing DC voltage. It's also a cool looking device that uses a retro magic eye tube as an indicator, even if it's not particularly useful today.